Alrighty, today's lesson is on linear inequalities. Um, our learning intentions are to solve multi-step inequalities and to solve compound inequalities. You will know that you have learned this when you can solve a multi-step linear inequality, solve compound inequalities, identify solutions. Sometimes we have a hard time with that with inequalities and write compound linear inequalities. So our recall for, day, for today you can try on your own, but I'm gonna go over it since I am not there. We use inequalities to describe relationship between two expressions that are not equal usually. So that's a big thing right there. Um, so this says graph the inequality on a number line and use it to determine if each statement is true or false. So I just wanna remind you guys real quick, the symbols less than kind of looks like a sideways L, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. If it doesn't have the line underneath, it's an open circle, and if it does, it's a closed circle. So what we're gonna do, you can do it right on the number line, or if you're like me, I like to do it above. So this says X is less than seven. So because it says less than, I'm putting an open circle there, and then less than X, all the numbers are less than seven. So less than numbers are here. So it's that. The next piece of this says, um, determine if each statement is true or false. So if X equals five, is five less than seven? True or false? So you probably know five is less than seven. So that means it's true. But if you look right here, this graph represents all the solutions to this inequality. So there's not just one answer, there's an infinite number of answers. And as long as that number is somewhere on this graph, then it's a solution. What about 10? Well, 10 isn't on the graph, right? 10 is also not less than seven. So that's false. And then the next one, is x equals seven. So if we go right to seven, because we have an open circle there, it can't equal seven. That's how mathematicians notate it on a graph. Also, is seven less than seven? Seven is not less than seven. Seven equals seven, so it is false. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which says, Let's examine what happens to inequality statements when we perform operations on them. So I know this might be a reminder for a lot of you, but we're gonna go ahead and go through it. So add negative three. So five is greater than or equal to two. So it says add five to both sides. So if I add five to both sides, does that inequality still hold true? Oh, it says negative three. Let's add that negative. And I don't know why I made that a two, but now it's a three. Five plus negative three is two. And five plus negative three, this should be two plus negative three is negative one. So sorry about that guys, I'm just adding three to these two numbers up here and I messed that whole thing up. So first of all, did it produce a true statement when we added negative three to both sides? Yep. Now let's subtract seven. Five minus seven, is that greater than or equal to two minus seven? Five minus seven is negative two. Two minus seven is negative five. Negative two is bigger than negative five, so that is also true. Over here, this says what happens when you add or subtract a negative to both sides of the inequality. So when we added or subtracted a number, the inequality holds true. So in math, that just means that it's true if you add or subtract, okay? The next one says multiply both sides of the inequality by positive three. So five times three, is that greater than or equal to two times three? So that's 15 and that's six. So yep, that's true. 
divide both sides of the inequality by negative one. So some of you probably remember this, that in math, whenever we divide by a negative number, the inequality sign switches. So if you divide or multiply by a negative number, this inequality sign has to switch. So this statement is no longer true because negative five, sorry, is not greater than or equal to negative two unless you switch the sign, okay? So what happens when you multiply or divide by a negative? You have to flip the inequality sign. Okay, moving on. So solving linear inequalities is much like solving equations. So the only difference is the symbol in between. So don't let that um, symbol like mess you up. So the only thing that's different is that you have to walk, watch out for negative coefficients because then you need to flip the inequality sign. Okay, so just a friendly reminder, step one, get rid of those denominators, clear the fractions, step two, clean up the left, clean up the right. Step three, get the variable on one side, reverse addition or subtraction, and then last step, reverse um, negative, uh, multiplying or dividing. So solve each inequality, then check your solution. So you guys don't always like to do this, but this is such a good thing. So no fractions. This side is clean, this side is clean, variables only on one side, undo addition or subtraction. So I'm gonna reverse that addition of four and get it away from the X. And so I get X is less than seven. So the way we're gonna test our solution is we're gonna pick a number that's less than seven to see if we got this right. So let's try uh, six. So when X equals six, we have six plus four, so I'm plugging it back into this equation right here. So x plus four is less than 11. I said that when I solved it, any number less than seven will work. So six is a number less than seven. So let's just see if the original equation holds true. Is 10 less than 11? Yes, so this is a good solution. Next one, ooh, tricky, tricky. I see the negative three there. I'm gonna go through my steps. No fractions to bust. The left side and the right side are already cleaned up. I already have just the X on one side. There is no addition or subtraction of constants to reverse, but then what about coefficients? Coefficients are the numbers in front. So I'm gonna divide both of those by negative three, and I'm gonna be really careful to flip the sign. So I'll write this out, divide by a negative number flip sign. Okay, so it was pointing in that direction before and now it's pointing in that direction. So we get X is less than negative 17. So give me a number that is less than negative 17. You can pick negative 18, negative 19, negative 20, whatever you want, it's fine. I like to pick the number just to the left if it's smaller. So I'm gonna try x equals negative 18, and I'm going back to the original equation, and I'm checking my solution. And a negative times a negative is a positive, so this one ends up being 54 is greater than 51, and that's true because I got the right inequality sign there, okay? Flipping it over, working on more of these. It says example two, solve each linear inequality, then check your solution. So following the same steps, no fractions, no left or right needs simplifying, variables already on one side. So I reversed the subtraction of one by adding one, and then I reversed the coefficient of two by dividing by two. And it's not negative, so I don't need to worry. And I get x is greater than 10. And then we're gonna try 
a number. So what's a number greater than 10? So let's try x equals 11 just to make sure we didn't miss anything. So back to the original equation, if I pick a number in the solution, which is infinite, but I'm picking one specific number, I should get a number bigger than 19, and I get 21 is greater than 19, so that works out. Ooh, you guys have a hard time with this one right here, so we're gonna be really careful and make sure we fraction bust. So in class, when we fraction bust, we do this little symbol to say put it on every term. Terms are separated by pluses and minuses, so negative 2 thirds x, minus two and 11 are all terms. So if I wanna cancel that denominator of three, I'm going to put it in the numerator and then to keep the equal or the inequality sign true, I'm gonna go ahead and give it to all of them. This three cancels with this. So I get to that. Then I'm gonna undo, so I cleared the fraction. The left side doesn't need to be cleaned up. The right side doesn't need to be cleaned up. And then um, I'm gonna reverse the subtraction and now I'm gonna reverse the multiplication. But red flag, ding, 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 right here. I gotta flip the symbol. So I get that x is less than negative 19.5 when I do 39 divided by negative 2. So pick a number less than. Why don't we try, we don't have to pick a decimal. What's a number less than negative 19? One more in this direction would be negative 20. So you might want to pick, because we're going to have to divide by 3, I'm going to pick negative 21 because 21 is divisible by three and I just don't want to deal with fractions. So negative two thirds times negative 21 minus two is greater than 11. Okay, so you can clear the fractions right here if you want to make your life easier or you can just reduce. Three goes into one once, three goes into 21 seven times. So we have negative two times negative seven which is negative 14, and then we get negative 16 is greater than 11. Sorry, I said that was um, negative times a negative makes a positive, so then this ends up being 12, and 12 is bigger than 11. That's the way that most of these problems go. Um, this one, there's no fractions. We can't clean up the left or the right, but we have two x's, so I'm getting the variable on one side and I'm not going to be dividing by an X at all. So I'm going to put dot, 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 because I think you guys can get it from there. And then this one, we apply that distributive property. We get 4X plus 8. And then just like we did before, get the variable on one side. And then what you'll notice is that it disappears. So we, when the variable drops out, we look at the statement and de determine if it's true or false. Is negative five smaller or less than eight? That's a true statement. So then this is all real numbers. And you could pick any number you want and check it in there. We're gonna not do that for that problem. Now we have compound inequalities. So sometimes there are inequalities that um, show up as two. So if it's an or, the compound inequalities usually go away from each other, like ors on a boat, like a kayak or a canoe. So if it's or, it usually goes away from each other. The ones you guys are see, that's how we try to keep it but just know that it's like oars of a boat and the and ones usually go together. So when you do an or problem, this can happen or this can happen. Like if you want to go to the football game on Friday, your homework has to be done or your room has to be clean. 
you get to pick when, which one to do when your parents let you go. The and ones, both statements have to be true. This and this. So if you want to go to the football game on Friday, your room has to be clean and your homework has to be done. Both of those things must be true. So that's the difference between or and and. Um, we usually see or problems come from greater than, great or, and we usually see and problems come from less than, great or, away, hold on, great or, away, less than, together, okay? So example three says, write a compound inequality to represent the values shown on the number line. So these are coming together, together, okay? So therefore, it's going to be an and. So let's start with this number first, two. X is greater than two because their numbers are going this way. And then six and, so you have to write that word there, you can't just leave it, and x is less than or equal to 6 because it's going to the left. Now, in the world of math, there is a fancy shortcut to write and problems. What you do is you put the smallest number and the biggest number, and then because the x is here, these have switched, so you switch that inequality symbol too. But you don't have to do that. That's just fun if you're comfortable with, with it. Okay, so these ones are going away from each other. One is here going this way. One is this way. So they're not going together. They're going away like as if you were rowing oars on a boat. So this is going to be an oar problem. So least to greatest, we always start with that. So x is less than negative 4 or make sure you have that word, x is greater than two. Oh, that's five, negative five, not four. Now, ors cannot be combined together. The only ones, the only compound inequality, compound meaning more than one, so two, is this right here. All right, this right here is interesting because students sometimes have a hard time with this. And it says, which of the following are possible solutions to the inequality? So you have two choices. You can either solve the inequality or you can just plug it in. So I'm gonna teach you the plug-in trick because I want you to get good at that. So first of all, we're gonna plug in two. Negative one, is that less than or equal to two times one minus five? And is it also less than seven? Okay, so negative one is less than or equal to two minus five is negative three, which is less than seven. So this part is true. That part is true. Negative three is less than seven. Oh, I don't know why I plugged that in. I'm sorry, guys, this is actually negative one. Either way, negative one is still less than seven. I should have plugged in two because this says two. Um, negative one is less than seven, so that part is true, but, and then this one here, is negative one less than or equal to, it doesn't matter which one, but if it is one of those, then it counts. Is negative one less than or equal to negative one? Yes, so this is a solution. Let me try and not make a mistake on the next one. So now I'm plugging in five. And we get negative one is less than or equal to five, which is less than seven. So is negative one less than or equal to five? Yes, true. Then you're gonna overlap that five and say is five less than seven? Yes, that's also true. Okay, then we're gonna plug in six. Okay, so I get negative one is less than or equal to seven, 
and seven. So first I'm gonna look at this one. True or false, is negative one smaller than seven? Yes. True or false, is seven less than seven? That's false, so this is not a possible solution. And last but not least, let's try 11. Okay, so we evaluate, is negative one less than or equal to 17? True. Is 17 less than seven? False. If at any point in math you get a false statement, it's not considered a solution. Even if part of it works, if the whole thing doesn't work, it's not considered a solution. All right, so now we're gonna move on to solving these. Right away, I can see that this is an and. And the reason that I can see that this is an and is because it has two of these symbols. Or problems will always have the word or, okay? So this is an and, and this is an or, and this is an or. Or problems always have the word or. Okay, so how do we do these? Now, we're trying to solve for this x right here but there's a minus 10 and a six with it. And we used to say what you do to one side, you do to the other, but we have two sides in a middle now. So what you do to the middle, you have to do to the other two. So I'm gonna add 10, add 10, add 10. And I get six is less than six X, which is less than or equal to 24. And then the X is still not by itself. So if I'm dividing out the middle, I have to do both sides. So I get one is less than x, which is, and x is less than or equal to four. So I'm gonna go on my number line. One is open, one is closed. And x, so if you really look at this, x is greater than one. I know it's backwards, but one, if I were to rewrite it, you have to switch the sign. And then this one says x is greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to four. So I get right there. Okay, this one, add five, add five, add five. Now there's a middle. So negative three is less than or equal to negative x, which is less than or equal to 10. Then I'm gonna divide everything by negative one to get that negative. Uh-oh, dividing by negative. Red flag, three is greater than or equal to x, which is greater than or equal to negative 10. So in the world of math, your numbers need to be in order from least to greatest. So this was the smallest one, but now this one is. So it's fine, we just have to switch the inequality signs too if we're switching our numbers around. So there's our answer. Here's negative 10 and here's three. And they're gonna meet together because that's what and problems do. Now we have the or problems. Ors make it two separate ones. So subtract four or make sure you write that word, carry that word down just like we work down in math. We need to carry all those words down too. So x is less than or equal to five. So here is where five is, and less than is to the left. So you kind of see if your variable is first, if the x is first, wherever this is pointing, that's the direction you go. It doesn't work if your x isn't first. So for example, the number was first here, right? So we're actually going to the right instead of to the left. And x is greater than 10, open circle in that way. Last but not least, don't be afraid if we get some fractions. It's okay, these are just rational numbers. So whenever I'm asked to graph that, I like to, ooh, Whenever I'm asked to graph that, I like to um, put it 
in mixed numbers. So this is called an improper fraction. How many times does three go into eight? Twice with two left over. Five X is greater than or equal to 30 or or divide by five, divide by five, X is greater than or equal to six. So two and two thirds is somewhere between two and three. So two and two thirds, do that, go this way, and then X is greater than or equal to six is gonna be that way. Alrighty. Alrighty, so the last little bit is our speed limit problem. The speed limit on a local highway is 65 miles per hour. You will get a ticket if you are going less than 15 miles per hour under the speed limit or more than 10 miles per hour over the speed limit. So it says write a compound inequality representing the speeds for which you would receive a speeding ticket. Okay, so you might be stuck on this. So I'm gonna go back to the FUS acronym, so FACTS. Um, okay, the ticket, if you go less than 15 miles and you get a ticket, if you go greater than 10 miles over the speed limit, right? The unknown is the equation so we just need to set up an inequality. So the setup would be, uh, oh, equation and where X is your speed. Because this is, is about you. So we have X minus 65. So whatever your speed is, minus 65, less than negative 15, because that's under the speed limit or x minus 65 is greater than 10. So this was when you would receive a speeding ticket. This one is for when you wouldn't. So I'm gonna set this up too. So if you are less than or equal to 15, so if you're right at that, so 65 minute minus 15 would be 50. So if you were 50 miles per hour, then you wouldn't get a ticket. It's when you go a little bit under that. And then same thing, if you add 65 to the other side, that would be 75. This last example says, give two examples of driving speeds when you would receive a speeding ticket. So one on the lower side would be 45 miles per hour. I don't want to be quiet. And... One on the other side would be 85 miles per hour. I want to be loud. I want to be loud. And that is, what's your name? Bricky the Cookie. That is Bricky the Cookie signing off.